Hello and welcome. My name is Elise and I'm a design team member at Trinity Stamps. Just wanted to get started and let you know that as this is uploaded, there is a new release going on at Trinity Stamps to celebrate their second birthday. A lot of birthday themed things in this release, but also some non-birthday themed things. Definitely something for everyone and I encourage you to go check it out. The links are all down below in the description box. Today I'm going to be making a clean and simple birthday card with one of the new release stamp sets. Let's take a look at the card that I'm going to make. It is this very sparkly cake themed card. I love this cake. I think it's so much fun and there's a lot of things that you can do with it. If we look at the supplies, see you see I've got that best wishes stamp set. I've also got out the four bar card die set. I'm going to be using that largest stitched uh, rectangle. I've also got the dies for this set plus the add-on. I'm not going to be using the add-on today, but it's worth looking at because it's really neat. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp down that cake image onto some 110-pound um, cardstock, and I'm going to be using a, a Copic-friendly black ink to do my um, stamping with because I'm going to be using Copic markers to color today. I'm just going to go ahead and get a good impression of that stamping it down twice. It is a pretty large image. I believe it's about three inches tall. Go ahead and get a good impression of that. And then I have die cut out using that um, rectangle, stitch rectangle from the four bar die set. And I'm using the um, kind of confetti, if you will, from that stamp set. The big bar does not reach the entire way across, so I'm using one of the extra confetti pieces just to make this reach. And I'm going to be doing some repeated stamping and some heat embossing. So I'm just using some Versamark ink. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down. And then I'm just going to slide my paper up. This is like one of the greatest things about using your MISTI tool is that you can just slide it up and get a repeated pattern. I'm not really measuring how uh, you know many grid squares I go up. I go up about two grid squares every time. Some of these end up closer together than others, but if you threw confetti up in the air, it would be random. So I'm really okay with random, but if you want this to be precise, just remember how many squares you need to scoot up your paper and make sure that you're doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and go through this entire panel, but I have condensed this down for you guys so that you don't have to watch that many. And then I am going to do um, some heat embossing. So I'm using this really fun kind of like rainbow sparkle embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. It's almost like holographic. I don't know. It's super, super cool. It's kind of like a clear embossing powder just with glitter in it as well. It's linked down below in case you're interested. Just using my tweezers to pick up that panel, knock off the excess here. And then I'll go in once again and make sure this is coated. Just dumping on the rest of that pattern. I'm just using a piece of copy paper so I can um, pick up the sides and pour this right back into the jar so that there's no waste. Just going ahead and heat embossing that. This is clear embossing powder, so it's a little bit hard to see, but in person, this is rainbow sparkly and really, really cool. Here's a look at that. It's really fun just to add a little bit of sparkle to what would have been a really plain and simple card. I'm gonna go ahead and do some Copic coloring. A look at the uh, different markers that I'm gonna use here. My Copic coloring is pretty basic. I usually just go from um, darkest to lightest, nothing fancy. All of um, these blends are just two color blends today. Just trying to keep it simple and easy. I am coloring the cake part uh, kind of like a yellow. So that way it's just like vanilla yellow cake. And then coloring the frosting, really fun colors. One of the neat things about this set is that there's so many different ways that you can color this. And it's great for birthdays, but 
best wishes is generic enough that it would also be great as a wedding card or um, like a congratulations on a new baby. There's so many things that you can use this stamp set for. So I know that this is one that I will use a lot. Also, the dies um, for the stamp set do come with the outline for the best wishes. And if you get the add-on set, which is like a lift the flap thing where you can lift up the cake layers, it's really cool. Um, then you get the best and wishes, the words. Then you have the word and the shadow, which is really fun. While I'm coloring, I thought I'd tell you a little bit um, about the release. Now, if you're watching this on the day that it goes up, which is Friday the 26th, then you should hop over to Instagram. Um, the Trinity Instagram is linked down below and get in on some giveaways. There's some hops going on. I also uh, would highly encourage you to join the Trinity Inspiration group on Facebook. There's giveaways happening there. And it's just a great place um, if you love Trinity stamps to keep up with new releases and what's going on, design team projects, and just you can share your own projects there. We really like to see those. So I highly recommend joining that group if you're not already in it and be sure to go over to Instagram because there is giveaways. Um, and I think we all love a good giveaway. As you can see, I am coloring the frosting the same color as I'm coloring the word for that layer. There are very fancy tutorials online that you can look up on how to color frosting with Copic markers. I am just not that fancy. Um, when I make a card, I want it to be easy and accessible and something that is easy for me to make and something that is easy for me to teach you how to make and for you to be able to replicate. So this is really not that fancy, um, but the end result is very cute. And I've always said a recipient doesn't necessarily realize what perfect Copic coloring technique is. They're just happy to get a handmade card, quite frankly. But I hope that me leaving in this coloring um, has given you a little bit of insight on how I color and how you might color if you are new to alcohol markers. From here, we move on to building the card. So I'm going to use some foam tape to um, pop up the cake onto my confetti panel. Just using some scotch uh, foam tape on that. And I am going to pop that up onto the confetti. Add a little bit of dimension and interest. I think for clean and simple cards, the more dimension that you have, um, kind of the better because it adds extra interest to what would probably mostly be a plain card. So got that cake down. And now I am going to add more foam tape to that stitched card panel. I've got some scraps there at the end that I'm trying to use up. Just going to go ahead and line that up onto my card base. This is an A2 size card, meaning that folded is four and a quarter by five and a half. And just wanted to show you a little bit of that sparkle here. Decided that I needed some additional sparkle on the frosting layers. So I'm just bringing in a glitter pen. That way the frosting layers match that very glittery background that I heat embossed. Gonna go ahead and finish up that coloring. And then let's take one last look at all of the sparkle on this. In real life, this really, really sparkles. I hope that you have enjoyed watching me make this card. Like I said, hop over to Instagram for the giveaways and join the Facebook group because there's more there. If you want to see more from the design team, please subscribe and I will catch you in the next one.